Hey guys, Mr. Fox here. So the uh, machine that I bought for my back power arrived today. So I thought I would uh, just share a little quick unboxing video. See what we got. All right. The box itself weighed 55 pounds, so you know it's got to be pretty awesome, whatever's in there. So it came with some freebies. Here is a Gambius Hephaestus 2 uh, headset that was thrown in for, for free. That's pretty nice. Also uh, a Gambius uh, keyboard, a mechanical seven color LED keyboard. Uh, it's their branded Mac too, but it's made by Gambia, so that's nice too. What else? Uh, this looks like the uh, mouse pad that was included for free. Sweet, nice and big one. So that's great. I like it. Looks good. It's got that uh, red. Uh, lion or whatever it is on their logo. What else here? Okay, this looks like my PSU tables and manuals and all the spare stuff that goes along with that. So I'll look at that later. start guide. So let's look at this beast. It's a View 31 thermal tape case. I'm going to have this setting right here on this file cabinet next to my desk. So let me clear a spot off so we can get a better look at it. Packaged really well, as you can see. Wow, that looks pretty sweet. Get it up here where you guys can see it.
Looks like you probably ought to be able to see that fine. So here's the back, um, the rear side of the motherboard tray. You can see uh, that's uh, tempered glass as well. So I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit so it looks more presentable. So here's the other side. Let's take a quick look. Got some nice packing in there to help keep you in place. So we've got 8700K, and it's like some G Skill Rip Jaws memory. Let's take a look. I'll take more look closer look at that. The uh, GTX 1080Ti Super Clock 2, and a 1000 watt EVGA PSU. So, on the back here, pretty standard uh, ATX. And I'll get you a look at the front side here. So they added the LED strip here. We've got a thermal take um, ring, uh, 360 millimeter radiator up on top with three uh, ring LED fans. And I've got the EVGA uh, hybrid water cooler that we're going to mount to this uh, 1080 Ti SC2. And not sure, depending on how long the hose is, whether I'm going to put the radiator on the back here or up on front. But we'll figure that out and we'll explore it together. So a quick look at the front side. Also tempered glass. Uh, front panel is removable. So let me get this thing set up and more presentable and we'll take a closer look. Well I hope you enjoyed the unboxing video. Um, we're going to take a little bit deeper dive look at this machine and I want to say a few things about iBuyPower first. Um, some of you are probably wondering why did I buy a machine from iBuyPower instead of building it myself. And why did I buy it at all? You get, a lot of you guys that know me know I've been a notebook overclocking nut for a long time with, with Alienware and uh, then Clevo. And I still love laptops, don't get me wrong. But it had been a long time since I had a desktop. I wanted to build it myself. But when it came down to it, um, I couldn't find the CPU I wanted. I knew that all I could afford right now was an 8700K. I was tired of quad cores, wanted a hexa-core. So uh, when I started going out to look for the parts, there's obviously no 8700K to be found in uh, November of uh, 2017. So um, I had done business with iBuyPower years ago, like December of 2007, bought an old uh, Compal, I think it was called a Battalion uh, gaming laptop from them. And uh, they were all right, but uh, since then, they've grown, become a very reputable company. Matter of fact, uh, John KSSS, good friend of mine at Notebook Review Forums, is a social media rep for them. He took a tour of their place, really likes it, was impressed with what he saw. And uh, through discussions with John, um, I decided like a year ago um, that I would consider that as an option if necessary. So um, do I wish I could have? Had I wished I could have built it myself, of course I did. I love building computers and stuff like that. So I sold my P870 DM3 monster book um, to Dr. AMK at uh, No Book Review Forums. I sold the little uh, baby beast Eurocom Tornado F5 um, to uh, Skyfox90, also at No Book Review Forum. Both great laptops. The P870 DM3, hands down, the best laptop I've ever had. But I'd taken it as far as I go, overclocking the snot out of it, benching it at 5.2 gigahertz, and the uh, GPUs, the 1080 SLI, running at like 2100 megahertz on core and 11,000 on memory. And I uh, got to the point where it just plateaued. I couldn't go any further with it. Couldn't couldn't take it any higher. So both Dr. AMK, Skyfox 90, 
both got a screaming deal. Uh, so from that, I was going to allow, allow myself around $3,100 uh, for this deal. <clears throat> so, um, so I needed to use part of the money for some car repairs and that kind of thing. So really wanted a, a, an i9 uh, Extreme, but you know, I couldn't, couldn't go for $2,000 for a CPU right now. So could only find the 8700K through I buy power. Um, so I went about building the machine. So I got it Wednesday. Um, this is Saturday, so I've had it just about four days. Um, would I do it again? Absolutely. Was I pleased with I buy power? Without question. I'd highly recommend them. Uh, big shout out to uh, Yoji Ali Bang Bang. Yes, that's his real name. Great guy. Um, he was my sales rep, kept in frequent contact with me, gave me updates on a frequent basis. Really nice guy. I talked to him on the phone several times, got several emails. And uh, from start to finish, it was like, you oh, know, I don't know, tw 12 days, something like that. Um, so it wasn't too bad on the build time. But he kept me informed was a really good route. So if you're going to buy from my buy power and uh, you want to pick somebody out to do, to be your rep or whatever, Yoji's the man. So, hey, Yoji. So let's look a little bit closer at this machine. I've made some changes to it. I've you know, redone some of the wiring, <coughs> moved the fan to the front. Um, it looks a little bit different than when you saw it in the unboxing photos. I also deleted the CPU. Um, put some conductinot on the die, and I put on the EVGA uh, hybrid water cooler. Man, what a difference. So let's explore that together, and uh, I'll, let's just do that now. So since the uh, unboxing video, I moved uh, one of the blue ring fans from the back panel to the front, so I've got two on front now. Um, I've installed my own drives. It came with a two terabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda drive. Um, I have uh, two one terabyte Samsung SSDs. I have a 960 um, a 960 Pro 512 gigabyte NVMe drive uh, down the bottom here, and then right up underneath the CPU, I've got an X400. I'm running uh, Windows 7 on the 960 Pro, uh, Windows 7 Ultimate. And then I'm running uh, uh, Windows 10 Enterprise N on the uh, SanDisk X400. So I've got the EVGA hybrid water cooler on there. And where the fan was in the back before, I've got uh, the radiator there. So I delitted the CPU, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, put some conductor knot on it. And the temps are truly amazing. I'll show you some before and after uh, screenshots here in a bit. But... As you can see, overall, the thing looks looks sharp. Great looking system. So I said in the uh, unboxing part of the video that the front panel was uh, tempered glass. That's not correct. It's uh, plexiglass. As you notice that it's, it's curved on the right hand side there. And there's no seam. So it's definitely plexiglass. The two side panels are tempered glass. It's heavy and it's well made, very well made case. So it's the uh, Thermal Take View 31. Um, you can't really see it well here, but I cleaned up the wiring that was back here. It was kind of a rat's nest. I rebundled everything and and did that over again. So but anyway, I like it. So let's have a look at the before and after temps on this thing. I ran W prime 32M and 1024M and before as you can see that the CPU was getting up around 94 degrees on the W prime 1024M pretty high so temps are dramatically lower after the delay by about to what 18 degrees so Nice drop in temperature there. Center bench, uh, same story. Significant reduction in temperatures. 
course this with the CPU running 5 gigahertz. Nice scores even when the temps were high, but obviously cooler is always better. It was getting up there. The temps came way down. So there's still nice scores, like I said. A little bit higher scores after a cooler CPU. So having benchmark, let's uh, look at the difference in the GPU temperatures here. Around 10 to 12 degrees reduction in temperature before and after on the GPU. I haven't benchmarked there after the GPU cooler was added. And we'll take a look at uh, superposition benchmark. Same story. At like uh, what, 67 degrees with the air cooling. Dropped it down to 49, so huge. Huge reduction in temperatures on the GPU. And a better score because Pascal doesn't have the room temperature throttling problem when it's running 49, 50 degrees. Holds full boost clocks the whole time. So let's take a look at some future Mark benchmarks. I know they're my favorite. We've got a really great 3D Mark 11 score in Windows 7. Always performs better. We've got a nice uh, Vantage score, which is a, both 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark Vantage are pretty brutal uh, for CPU testing. Much better than the 3D Mark Suite. We've got a nice Skydiver Sky Diver score. And Skydiver out of the 3D Mark Suite is probably the best test for CPUs. Got a nice Fire Strike score. Fire Strike is primarily a GPU test. You get an accurate physics score, but for some reason, I guess they decided not to give it a whole lot of weight in the overall score, so primarily a GPU test. And then Time Spy, also fairly brutal. You got to have the memory and the CPU tuned right, or it's going to end up crashing, dumping you out to the de desktop. So let's have a quick look at the BIOS and Windows overclocking tools. ASUS does a really great job on both of those things. So let me get into the BIOS real quick. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in here. I'm just going to do a quick run through on the menus. Overclocking this thing was super easy. I had it running 5 gigahertz with no effort at all. Now, matter of fact, it's got a built-in profile for that, but I've tended a little bit more since then. I'll be soon seeing if I can push it up to 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz. So, um, as you would expect on an enthusiast board like the Maxima, Maximus uh, 10 Hero Wi-Fi AC, it's loaded up with lots of overclocking features. We'll just uh, take a quick peek at them. For both the CPU and RAM, you lack nothing as far as settings. I did uh, see that there was a BIOS update uh, right after I got it, so I went ahead and flashed that. I could not see any differences between the original and the new, so they probably just fixed a bug somewhere. But it's a really great BIOS. It'd be awesome to have some kind of comprehensive BIOS like this on, say, like the Clevo P870. Prima does a fantastic job with, with the uh, Aptio BIOS, but this uh, UEFI environment where you have a mouse that works and everything is just pretty sweet. Back in the day when I, my last desktop that I built, uh, there was no UEFI BIOS. It was all uh, legacy type. So, big difference from what I'm used to. So, literally everything is adjustable. You can disable or enable the onboard graphics as well. So, 
8700K does does have the internal graphic, uh, Intel graphics, so don't know why anybody would want to use that on the desktop, but I suppose if your GPU died or something, it might come in handy. So you can configure all your SATA drives. Enable and disable them. Control your motherboard lighting. Here's where you can set your PCIe NVMe settings for the drives. Power management. All the stuff that you'd expect to find on a very high quality enthusiast desktop board. Here you can uh, decide what gets monitored and what doesn't. As far as fans and water pumps, that type of thing. That's your manual fan controls. You can choose from DC or PWM boot configuration all the options you'd expect to find CSM support so of course secure boot's been disabled I hate that crap and your boot priorities you got a few extra tools in here like the easy um, what was it easy flash utility or yeah and then they've got a tool where you can uh, set up your overclock profiles and save them. So lots of cool stuff. So enough of that, let's go back into Windows and we'll take a look at the tools that are there for us. Not a huge fan of uh, adjusting things in Windows, but I'll tell you what, it's whether you're using Next to you or throttle stop or something like that. It can be really handy to tinker around in Windows, uh, do something that's temporary that doesn't get committed to the BIOS while you're looking for the right settings. And then once you get it dialed in the way you want it, then go apply those settings in the BIOS. So I can't really complain. And ASUS has probably the, the best in Windows overclocking tools I've seen. A lot of stuff here. TPU, you can set the uh, things like the core voltage and that type of thing. Uh, multiplier. Just a lot of, a lot of cool stuff in here. Fan controls, you name it. Here again, it would be awesome to have this comprehensive of a tool. Levo has a pretty good one, but obviously nothing of this caliber. It would be pretty amazing to have something like this for the P870. Human has a uh, file cleanup tool. So, interesting stuff. Update checker. flash the BIOS from that screen as well and just system information motherboard CPU and SPD so all pretty cool stuff like it all right let's uh, go ahead and run a Firestrike benchmark together before we do let's uh, set things up here real quick As you can see, I've got the CPU running 5 gigahertz. Memory's running at 3200. I'm going to bump this uh, 
clock speed up here. Let's see what we're running. I think it's 2075 on core. Yep. And we've got uh, 11,400 on memory. So I've got 120% power limit, temp target maxed out to 90, uh, 100 offset on core and 200 offset on memory. So, we're starting out here, load uh, just below the mid 30s on the uh, CPU and uh, graphics card is running around 36. I forgot to uh, max out the fans on the radiator real quick. Oh, they're already maxed out, so there we go. So let's, um, let's go ahead and run a fire strike. I'm recording this with uh, shadow play. I'm um, embarrassed to say I haven't installed. I haven't got uh, mirrorless action all set up and installed. So um, I had to install new drivers for the video. So I just went ahead and installed that, knowing I was going to do some screen capture. I normally don't use shadow play, and I only use the uh, J95 mod for my drivers, where you only have five folders and none of the crap, none of the telemetry or anything. So. Um, if you notice here, we've got uh, starting out 35 on the GPU and f about 45 on the CPU. So the CPU is running at 5 gigahertz on all six cores. Um, 2075 on the GPU core. Temps are still in the mid to low 40s on the GPU and low 50s, high 40s on the CPU. So it looks like around 45, 44, 45 degrees on the GPU and about 48 to 51 on the CPU. Kind of move around a little bit. GPU's uh, pulling around 260 watts or so. See how warm our CPU gets. So it's holding strong 5 gigahertz, no throttling or anything. 63 degrees, 65 degrees. Nice and cool. So the physics test, about to wind this down. Love the 1080 Ti beast of a card. So considering we're recording this with shadow play and got that overhead crap from Nvidia, uh, not a bad score. So the 
like the CPU maxed out at 70 on a couple of uh, or on the on one core CPU package was 64 only got to 115 watts and let's see what the GPU maxed out at 47 degrees so not too shabby so let's run a uh, 3D Mark 11 real quick. Get a little bit higher power draw from that. So about 290 a little over 290 watts from the GPU. 293. Isn't it amazing that the uh, Pascal GPUs use such low voltage? So we're pulling like one volt there. One point zero two five volts. My um, CyberPower PSU meter is showing about four hundred and thirty two volts being pulled by the whole system, so that's not bad. Got lots of overhead with that one kilowatt power supply, so I can probably add another ten eighty Ti hybrid for uh, SLI. Not run out of PSU. Their GPU is still right at 50 degrees or so, so it's staying nice and cold. CPU's only hit about 53 so far. Can't hate that. So our famous physics test, brutal, bear in mind I'm running Windows 10 right now, so I haven't booted into Windows 7, so the physics test is going to suck compared to uh, Windows 7. Windows 10 seems to cripple it. But it still hit 50 frames per second, so it's not too shabby. About ready to wrap it up here. Thirty-five, thirty-eight, not too bad considering that I'm recording with Shadow Play. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick um, unboxing and review of the system. I really couldn't be happier with it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please uh, feel free to make a comment, click thumbs up, and subscribe. Take care.